morning, everybody. Welcome, uh, Canada College of International Student Learners. Welcome. Um, Salam alaikum. Hola. Namaste. Ni hao ma. Anya zeo. Trying in all the, the, the ways I possibly can. Sasrikal. Welcome to our winter 2024 pre departure orientation session. My name is Dr. Amr Tayyip. I have the pleasure of offering a few words at the outset of today's orientation session to introduce the presenters and the topics of today's session. We have a fulsome and comprehensive pre-departure orientation prepared for you today. We hope that through this comprehensive session, you will be well prepared to arrive safely in Canada, register for your classes, understand what our local community is all about, and give and receive communication with your college effectively. Please remember that this session is designed to be the bridge between your travel to Canada and the comprehensive orientation activities designed for you once you physically arrive in Canada and North Bay. In fact, the winter 2024 in-person orientation is already confirmed for January the 5th, 2024. Our presentation today is structured in several key sections using a deliberately designed funnel approach. The idea here is to introduce you to Canada and the local community of North Bay in initially. After this, we will introduce you to the main communication channels for international students at Canada or College. This is important because getting and receiving the right information is so very crucial for your success at Canada. In preparation for your travel to Canada, we will touch on matters that will help to ensure the smoothest possible trip for you. Living in Canada and North Bay is also something you will need to adapt to when you arrive. This is why we will be sharing with you many useful tips and best practices to make your stay in this country a little bit easier. Finally, our content concludes with the elements that you can expect to be relative uh, to be the most helpful relative to registration. There are many pieces in, in uh, this section that can serve to reduce stress and anxiety later down the line. We also have a fun and engaging activity at the end. It's a Kahoot. Uh, my colleague Amil will try to take that on. Uh, please stay tuned until the very end for this fun activity, one you don't want to miss. And with this, I will start. we will start our presentation today. Um, let me ask for the slides to be advanced uh, uh, just by a few, if you don't mind. And we'll go to maybe the next slide, Sonia. This is uh, our, our key team that uh, I'd like to introduce to all of you today. We have with us Dr. Chris, uh, Christopher Duncanson Hales, uh, Amil Mohammed Farhad, and Banush Shafai Sararudi. Um, so, Amil and Benush are our two key international student advisors in the international department, and Chris is our coordinator of international partnerships. Leanne Betiol, our colleague, uh, wasn't able to be with us today, but she's our supervisor of agent relations. Next slide, Sonia. We have Sonia Tucker, as uh, many of you know, she's our regional uh, representative in India uh, and uh, many other regions. And we also have our colleague, Medan Deng, who is our regional representative in China and, uh, and several other regions. We have a team of international student ambassadors we hire in the office every semester. We hope some of you will consider joining our team for the winter semester and beyond. Next slide, Sonia. And uh, with that uh, we have um, uh, also a number of colleagues, thank you, Sonia, that work uh, to help us in um, with everything that relates to international students. A lot of you will have connections uh, with our international admissions office. Several of our key colleagues are listed here. We also have our Department of Student Success. Student Success Services uh, colleagues, uh, including our International Transition Retention Support Coordinators, Jillian Gear and Ziad Rajabali, will be uh, key to your success at Kandor College. We also have colleagues uh, at the Perry Sound campus, uh, Laura Foltz and Ashley Roy. If some of you are destined for that particular campus, you'll get to know Laura and Ashley very well. So all of that to say, uh, while You'll see several people presenting on this during this session today. There are many others who play a role in your success at Canada. With that, uh, perhaps we'll uh, turn over to our first presenter to kick off the introduction. Um, and uh, that's Christopher Duncanson-Hales. 
uh, for an introduction to Canada and the community and city of North Bay and Barry Sound. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful session today. Chris, over to you. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Duncanson Hales. That's my life that's on the screen. Um, welcome you to this session about Canada. Um, I think we can go to slide two now. Uh, Canada, this is an information session on Canada and the northern North Bay region. Uh, Canada is a country known for its diversity and inclusivity. Today we'll look at our city, North Bay, um, a place that combines natural beauty with urban am 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 amenities. Um, this, special, this session is especially designed for international students who are coming from warmer climes. So we'll look a little bit about the weather, uh, the life, what we can expect when you come here to North Bay. So I think we're on the next slide, please. I've given you the access, Chris. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Dude. Oops. So as I said, we'll be looking at Canada and its uh, natural uh, resources and everything else. So, so North Bay is a city that perfectly blends wilderness with urban life, is an ideal destination for students seeking a balanced lifestyle. It's a diverse community and rich cultural heritage that makes it an excellent place for international students to call home. When you arrive, you will be arriving in winter, so the uh, snow should be on the ground by the time you come here. So Sudbury or sorry North Bay is located it's a gateway considered the gateway to the northeastern Ontario. It's 125 kilometers from Sudbury which is an hour and a half drive. It's 3 hours north of Toronto. Um, which is a pretty well straight up the highway. It is four hours from Hamilton, three and a half hours from Ottawa, which is our nation's capital, and five and a half hours from Montreal. And London, Ontario is another five hours as well. So that gives you a sense of where you're landing and where you're coming into. So it's we will be most of you will be landing in Toronto and then making the trek further north to North Bay. So the seasons and the weather in North Bay. Uh, North Bay experiences a full range of seasons, each with its unique beauty and challenges. The summers are warm and pleasant and perfect for outdoor activities. Spring and fall are transitional seasons, offering a mix of mild and cold weather. However, it's the winter that's a significant change for many of you, especially if you're coming from warmer climates. You can expect snow and cold temperatures from late November to early April. And understanding these season changes will help you prepare for life in North Bay, ensuring you make the most of your time here. So the average temperatures when you arrive will be in the December to March in, and it's average of minus nine. The average high temperature is five and the average low temperature is minus 14. Moving into January and February, we have what are called cold snaps, which can, where the weather can, can get as low as minus 20, 25, 30, but those don't last very long and they don't, aren't very often. So as you can see, preparing for winter is gonna be really important. So, to prepare for winter, uh, it can be a, it's going to be a new experience for many of you, I'm sure. So it's crucially to warm to dress warmly. So here's some tips for dressing warmly. First, layer your clothing. Start with a thermal base layer and add a fleece or wood mil, wool mil, mid layer, and finish with waterproof and windproof outer layer. And this is for when you're spending extended times outdoors. Protect your extremities, so wear good gloves, thick socks, warm hat, and a scarf to cover your space, face, especially during extreme cold. Invest in quality winter boots. Um, look for waterproof insulated boots with good grip for icy conditions. Most boots will have a, a cold weather rating, 
And most people in Northern Ontario try to get cold weather rating for minus 30 or more. It's critical to stay dry. Wet clothing loses its insulating properties. So waterproof gear is a must. And remember adapting to the cold is a gradual process. It's important to listen to your body and add or remove layers as needed. Oops, the slides are advancing without me doing it. Okay, so at Canador College, we value each student's journey. Our college boasts excellent programs, award-winning faculty, and one of the highest graduation rates in um, the province. And this is all set to play to uh, pave the way for your success. As already mentioned, we have several campuses, North Bay and Perry Sound campuses, as well as our Toronto GTA campus. Our campuses in North Bay and Perry Sound are equipped with modern facilities, including state-of-the-art equipment, extensive libraries, vibrant student life, ensuring a comprehensive and enriching educational experience. Canada College is dedicated to supporting our international students from cafeterias and gyms to libraries and student lounges. We offer a range of services to make your campus life comfortable and forgive and fulfill fulfilling. Oh, there we go. There we go. The international um, Amir already mentioned the international uh, student orientation. I cannot stress how important this is um, the, enough. This international student orientation on January 5th is a critical event for your successful transition to Canada or College. This orientation is tailored to help you as international students, especially those from diverse regions such as India, Africa, Latin America, and Europe. It's not just about formalities, it's an opportunity to build connections and to familiarize yourself with the campus, understand Canadian academic culture, and learn about the resources available. You'll meet faculty support, support staff and fellow students, giving you a strong start to your journey at Canada or College. So while we understand that everyone may not be able to attend, we strongly encourage you to participate in this valuable introduction to your new academic home. So this is a, it's it's one of these things where if you start out with a strong foundation, you're you'll transition and have a successful transition. And the orientation is one of the tools that, pardon me, one of the tools that'll help you with that. So that's my piece of the uh, presentation. I really look, I put my picture up on the uh, the screen so you can go back and you can see me and say hello if you see me in the hallways. And I really look forward to seeing everyone when you arrive here in January. Thank you so much, Chris, for this wonderful information. Uh, we're moving to our next session, which will be taken by uh, Banush. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chris and Sonia. Now we're going to go into the communication related uh, matters. So if we can just go to the next slide. Okay. All right. So what information can you trust? It is very easy to be misled. It is critical to obtain information from reliable stores. So this is extremely important um, as information can come across a lot of channels and a lot of information may not be correct. And as an international student advisor, where my job is to advise you with immigration matters as well, I cannot stress how important it is to make sure your information is correct, even if it's not immigration related, uh, because a lot of times people are misled or they aren't communicated proper information. One of the best resources to obtain correct information is to go to the department itself at school that you require information. But if not, International Department is always here to help. Um, we are here from 8.30 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. So anytime you have any questions or something's not clear, I really do suggest that you guys do stop by. Another vital way to obtain information, and this is um, an app that is mandatory for international students to download is the iSent app. We do regularly update it and we do send out vital information. For example, when I will be, when me or my colleague Anna will be hosting uh, information sessions, especially toward um, immigration matters, 
it will be sent on I sent app. Um, another great place to take a look at is your emails. Uh, we will be sending out information on in your emails as well. So that's uh, another place for you to guys to make sure that you're getting the right information. And lastly, one of the most critical places to get good information is the orientation that is on January 5th. As my colleagues have mentioned, it is a very important session and I really do recommend everyone to attend. So please make sure you do attend those, that session as, as well. Uh, if we just go back to the slide before, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, no, the one after, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Uh, so like I mentioned, check your I sent app frequently, and then also you can take a look at the FAQ on the on our website. Um, most of your questions will be answered there, um, and it's the quick, quickest way for you to obtain your um, answer. However, if something is not clear or if you didn't get your answer, again, I do recommend dropping us an email or stopping by at the international office. Um, Students who are consulting with agents and counselors must verify information provided on our website. So if you are obtaining information about a program or a certain, like um, something about the school, make sure you verify with the school itself. Um, if it has to do with the program, you can, again, stop, um, give us an email or you can give um, international admissions an email. Um, again, information acquired through social media and word of mouth should be verified again because miscommunication can happen very easily. If your question cannot be answered in the FAQ or the ISIN app, please reach out to the appropriate contact, with, um, which you will see in the following um, slide. We will have all of our emails, but also our emails are available on the website. So please make sure you go and if you need to verify the email again, uh, look on our website. and. Lastly, for the most efficient response time, please do send one email and allow us seven to 10 business days. I don't necessarily believe it, it, uh, in regular times it will be more than that, but do allow us some time to respond to your email. Sending multiple emails will just slow down the communication um, as we will have to go through the emails to see what uh, was communicated, what wasn't communicated. So again, I really suggest just sending one email with your questions and then uh, someone from the department will reach out to you. Uh, next slide, please. So a great resource for you to obtain your information is from our website. And this is kind of what our website looks like. Now, if you guys want to go to the international department, one easy way is to go is to go underneath support. And when you click support, um, it will drop down. And then if you scroll down, you'll find the international department. Um, next slide, please. Um, so you can uh, access important information and resources for for you, such as student support, seminar updates, Devon. Uh, Devon is a really great tool for you to use. It, they do host a lot of seminars, uh, specifically webinars, that would be very critical for your success in Canada. For example, there is a career cafe tonight um, that is taking place with Devon, um, where students can go and ask questions about jobs and their resume and about LinkedIn, all those inform uh, important things that you could use to find a job um, perhaps during your time studying at Canada or after. And also another great tools are the FAQs, like I mentioned, and who to contact. So that would be a section on our microsite where you can see who you can contact to get the right information. But again, if not, just send um, our department an email and then the correct person will email you back. Uh, next slide, please. So this is kind of what our website looks like. This is the, if you see the circle at the top, uh, it is the FAQ and you'll see the frequently asked questions. So this, this is a really great way for you to get like quick answers, but you might not be able to get all your answers there. So again, just email us or if you're at school and we're available, we're more than happy to help you. So just stop by. Next uh, slide, please. Um, so 
another great place to obtain information and um, who to contact would be about us section. So that's also a great section to look at on our Canada or International. Uh, next slide, please. And then, like I mentioned, this is the who to contact section as well. It's not very clear, but once you guys go on the website, you will see it more clearly. And then the international department staff by last name. So that's the list of what uh, each person in the department and their email or the contact information. Um, so it'll be really, really easy for you guys to go see who you should be contacting. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so as I mentioned, the ISIN app, I, can, I cannot stress how important this app is. As I mentioned, it is a mandatory app for international students. So be sure to download it. I, I believe you guys might be able to download it already. Um, if you have your letter of acceptance, you'll have all the information on there. Um, it is very important because we send out vital information and also you will be able to book times with the advisors through that app as well. It is available on Play Store and Apple Store. And yes, I, like I said, I cannot stress how important it is. Um, so this is what the iSend app looks like. If you guys see the notifications, we do send out like important information. For example, if um, if you were to take a, take a look at it today, you will see that we did update it about the Devon and a pre-departure session that is taking place today. And then on your right hand corner, you will see the advisor appointment where you could um, choose which advisor you want to speak to and what it is regarding. And then you will be able to book a time with us. Uh, next slide, please. And that's it for my section. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank you, Banush. And thank you so much for uh, stressing on the ISEN tab. It's really important for students to download for all the updates that are sent by the international office. So uh, we are coming uh, to the next part, which is about travel related matters. And uh, I'm sure uh, the students who have received study visa are already kind of very excited to travel. And the ones who are waiting to get their study visa uh, are just dreaming about traveling uh, to their dream destination and about studying and experiencing the life in Canada. So we'll take about 10, 15 minutes to quickly look into uh, uh, this session. And um, we, got, we are going to stress on things that you should do before your travel and during your travel. Um, the students who are waiting uh, for the decision on their study visa, we are just trying to kind of encourage you to take some uh, useful time and do some useful things during the time you have because your classes will start in January 2024. So we always stress this to students that you have a very independent life in Canada. And for that, you must learn some basic cooking because food is must for you to kind of go on and do your hard work, do your studies. And in it, in you know various uh, countries, uh, you know kids and students actually get the food from the family, so it's very important. It's the base of your independent life that you must have some knowledge of basic cooking. You have this time to prepare your resume the Canadian way. Um, when I mention resume, I must also kind of uh, stress on something called as Devant, which is a platform uh, which is available to the students when they join Canada, wherein you will learn all this, but you should have a fair idea of how your resume should look like. Uh, it's very essential to network with students. Uh, we, it's, it's the era of social media with so many WhatsApp and Facebook groups. But you should always remember the website and any email from the international department is the final information. Whatever goes on other groups on social media is informal and uh, that's not coming directly from the college. But yes, it does help you to connect with other students, other uh, your peers. And we will be sharing a group um, link for the WhatsApp group of Jan 2024 towards the end of the presentation. Uh, you should take time to read about Canada and its culture. Uh, if you're joining a particular field, whether it's uh, management or commerce or health related, it's this time to read more about that field. Uh, it's essential that you have the knowledge of what you will be doing in future. 
as my colleagues have already stressed that you must download iSent app on your phone. Uh, you must keep a tab of uh, the IRCC website on the latest updates for students and to the most important section before you travel, which is accommodation and your travel. So how you're going to travel from uh, Toronto to North Bay will come in the slides uh, later on, but your accommodation and travel must be booked in advance. It is not something that you do when you reach Canada. It must be done in advance. We are stressing that again. Um, so when you travel to Canada, we often let you know about the documents that you need. Well, you must be aware that LOA, which is letter of acceptance or your offer letter is the most important document that you must carry. In addition, obviously, to your passport and your mark sheets, uh, you must have uh, the letter that you receive when you receive uh, the PPR, you must carry those documents. Um, not just the final or the original documents, you must carry the photocopy of those documents and keep it in your handbag a few photocopies in your luggage as well. It is essential that you carry uh, photocopies of documents uh, because we have had cases in past where unfortunately students have lost their original documents. We don't want that to happen to anyone. But in that case, at least you have the photocopies. Um, we have stressed again that you must be uh, book, you must be booking your flights only after you receive your visa. There are students who book the flights in advance and they have to incur, um, you know, um, expenditure that could have been avoided. So please do that. Whichever airline you're booking, please make sure that you're aware of their baggage allowance. Some of the airlines offer only one bag, uh, the other bag is paid and you must be aware that the bag that you carry is 23 kgs. Uh, for example, Air Canada allows one bag, whereas Air India allows two. Um, British Airways can allow even more. We are not promoting any airline, but you must be aware of which way you're traveling and what's the baggage allowance. Um, if you have any health condition, you must know that your health insurance is paid as part of your tuition and it starts from 1st of January. However, if you have any health condition, you must carry a supplement um, health insurance to cover that because not all uh, will be covered in the health insurance, which is covered by the college in your tuition. Um, for students who are not from non-SDS countries, they must carry their proofs of financial resources that they have shown um, in their visa filing, you must carry those, the photocopies of those in the file that you must have in your handbag, okay? Um, if you are uh, traveling with family members, you must go through the process of how you must apply uh, for your spouse or common law partner and you have dependent children. You must get in touch uh, with the, the registered agencies to learn more about that and to apply for that. Um, it is essential that when you are in Canada, you have your family with you um, to kind of go through the journey because it's not an easy journey. Um, when you are traveling, um, I know that uh, baggage allowance uh, is the same. It's 7 kgs of your handbag and 23 kgs, one or two bags, depending upon the airlines. So you must carry a few important things during uh, your travel in the flight. Basic medications, uh, which you think are essential. And if you have any health condition, it is all the more more essential. You must not carry any liquid bottles above uh, 100 ml. Uh, as I am stressing again, your document file should be in your handbag with you all the time, which includes passport, LOA, financial proofs, your, um, you know, if any medical history, all your mark sheets, everything would should be in that uh, document file and photocopies as well. Um, we have often seen in past when uh, students carry stuff which is not permitted uh, in Canada and also which is actually not needed because everything is available here. Um, hygiene products is very important. Uh, your clothes and shoes is important. 
but when you look at the winters in canada the jackets or the sweaters you're bringing from your home country might not work here so don't carry too much of that just uh, a couple in dress you must buy when you're in canada um you should carry you know pen uh you know a stapler that's the basic that you must carry because you're going to do a lot of paperwork in the beginning and you must not pack anything dairy you must not pack fruits vegetables oil nothing of that sort um you know families love you so they will kind of insist you to pack all that stuff but please avoid that and the most important thing to keep in mind is you must have confidence uh, that's the most important thing when you kind of travel you must have confidence don't look uh, like you're lost uh, don't be in fear because everybody around you is going to help you canada is anyway a very friendly uh, country uh, and very friendly people who are there to help you never ever shy away from asking questions so whether you are in the flight or you are at the airport or when you are actually in canada uh always keep that in mind that confidence is very important and don't fear away from asking any questions um when you travel to canada uh, they can all the students actually land mostly at the pearson international airport uh, which is in toronto but then for the students who have to move to north bay there are a few options uh, to travel either you can take a flight from toronto pearson to jack garland airport which is in north bay or there is also an option of bus service from within the toronto pearson to north bay uh, which is the northern airport service so you don't have to even go out of the airport and you can have the bus service which can actually drop you wherever you want to in north bay so if you have booked a residence it will drop you at residence you have to put that address if you book any off campus accommodation you can be dropped there there's also another bus service which is ontario northland um which again starts from toronto or if you have known people in gta area or relatives and all then i'm sure you you will get in touch with them to help you um you know drop at north bay um when you arrive at the airport um you have to go through a process where you get the study permit and here i again reiterate that your document file is very important again you have to be confident because they will ask you basic questions and um now a lot of information is available online there are youtube videos student posting about the entire process of how they got the study permit but it is essential that you stay confident and they are going to ask very basic questions and you just have to show that document to them for some students it is very quick some students have even shown that they have done the entire process in like 15 20 minutes for students who take time who are not very you know well versed with their document file they might take like 45 minutes but it's a very um good process a quick process and a very helpful process and once you receive the study permit also make sure as my colleague amil stressed on that uh that you read the spelling you read your date of birth on that you check the details it's essential that you look at your study permit and then only come out of the airport um there are different signages i'm sure the students who will be traveling uh from toronto to north bay via flight you will get all the signages whether you have to move to terminal 1 or terminal 3 uh keep looking for the signages and if not please ask questions to anyone who is there um we once you're done with the entire process obviously then you move to the uh, luggage area and you get your luggage and then kind of uh you go to the bus service area or you go to your uh, connecting flight for north bay or if you have relatives definitely you will move out of the airport um it is important for students to understand that those who have already received their study visa as an institution and even if you look at um, the guidelines we do not expect students to travel 
um, you know, no more than four weeks in advance. So if your classes are starting uh, in first week of January, if you've already received visa, we expect that you will come in about first week of December, not before that. Um, and we request students to follow those uh, suggestions and guidelines. And if you're arriving late, if by any chance you've received your study visa late, um, we always stress the students to be on the campus on the first day of the class. It totally depends on the program coordinator where well, you will be given the extension to join the classes late. We do not do that. We do not appreciate that. Hence, it's important that if you're arriving late, get the permission in advance because if you have arrived late and you do not have the permission, there's no guarantee that you will be allowed to join the classes uh, because the seats get full by that time. Only in exceptional circumstances, uh, for example, I have an example that previously uh, there were floods in Kerala. In those exceptional circumstances, the extension were given to students to join classes. Otherwise, you have to be there. I reiterate again on the first day of your class. Uh, so this brings an end to the travel related matters. And um, I am sure that you would have learned some new things from it, considering there's so much available online. Please make sure uh, that you utilize this time for self-improvement and all the best for your study visa decisions. Uh, we move to our next section, uh, which is living in Canada, which will be taken by my colleague, Amel. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on from where you're joining us today. So uh, thank you, thank you, Sonia, uh, for uh, the wonderful information and to all my colleagues here. Uh, um, I can't stress enough how important it is to be uh, to gather all this information and like to uh, grasp as much as possible. I know it's um, it's a big uh, journey for sure, uh, coming from uh, leaving your home country and to come um, from different different parts of the world to come to Canada. I'm myself an international student uh, when I came in 2019. And uh, it has been a it has been a roller coaster of journey for sure. So um, I'm here to uh, provide some uh, um, insights and like to some life experience on how it's going to be uh, when you come to Canada. So the first thing it's uh, that you will will be very evident is culture shock. Culture shock is uh, something that you don't have to be. Uh, worried about, but at the same time, you should be cognizant and aware that it is going to come. As much as I was involved and excited to come to Canada, the culture shock slowly set in. Um, I mean, I've never left my, I never left my home country. I'm from India as well. So um, I never left my home country in my, uh, all my life. And when I came to Canada, it was very exciting uh, when I saw uh, the below, um, Below part temperatures, uh, the snow, and uh, you know, amazing uh, amenities and infrastructure here. It was all exciting, but that did come a culture shock and a feeling of loneliness, and uh, that is something to be very aware. And uh, one thing to uh, remember when that does happen is that it slowly goes off, and we do provide a lot of uh, services and support uh, for students. And please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Um, you may be thinking, is this something that I should even talk to uh, the staff about? 100% you are uh, encouraged to come talk to us about it. So, as I said, uh, um, many students, if not all of them, feel a sense of loneliness as we have always lived um, or as we have moved away from our uh, comfortable space and uh, all the way to a new country, a new education system. Uh, different cultures. Uh, when I say different cultures, one thing that helped me uh, overcome or uh, to navigate this culture shock is to make friends and uh, acquaintances with new culture, being open to uh, have and have open conversations and learn about uh, learn about uh, the culture from a, a friendship um, 
point uh, that helps you understand and get adapted uh, to the culture here. So as I said, culture shock is very normal and eventually it goes off. When I look back now uh, through the hard days, uh, those are all like very good memories now uh, because of the meaningful uh, friendships and uh, the connections that I have made uh, that have uh, helped me and uh, to, uh, to help me to be where I am now. Again, as I said, we do ha have a wonderful uh, team of uh, uh, staff here who are, are helping, who help students navigate uh, apart from academics, uh, your mental well-being. We have uh, mental health navigators and uh, support systems available for you. As Benush said, we are here to listen to you and advise you on matters on uh, immigration and like even if it's uh, a personal situation that you're dealing with. We are more than happy to uh, hear it out and navigate and uh, connect you with resources that is available on campus. Again, uh, one thing I will again uh, I can't stress enough is to be open to have um, to be open to make connections and uh, 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 learn from other cultures, uh, which helps not only to navigate the culture shock but also have me make meaningful connections that will help you in your journey here with us. The next is on uh, housing. Housing is um, a very important uh, uh, thing. And if you have not uh, secured accommodation already, uh, you should be uh, looking to uh, secure accommodation. We do have offer on campus housing. It's Candor Residence. If you go into the Candor website, uh, just type in uh, residence and you will be redirected to the Candor Residence website. Um, um, Although there is like a lot of uh, wait list, and uh, I mean a lot of wait time uh, for the residents, um, candle residents, I highly encourage uh, to um, make that application because there is always students who uh, are uh, either dropping their application or finding other places, and there's a space that opens up uh, on campus. So on campus uh, housing, um, we do have it uh, right uh, below the hill. It is uh, it is much closer to the uh, uh, College Drive campus, and uh, there is the the option here is like many residences in Canada do not offer uh, the the means to cook. As uh, Sonia mentioned, if you're uh, interested in cooking, residence allows you to cook as well, and it is an all in inclusive um, uh, accommodation. Um, you have utilities, you have laundry services, you have Wi-Fi, and uh, you have transportation that, that takes you uh, to and back uh, around the city. For off-campus housing, one thing to be very, very aware here is uh, to be aware of scammers. And as already uh, Benush, my colleague, pointed out, uh, there is a very it is very easy to be misled uh, with information. Uh, make sure. Um, the information that you're looking up is uh, valid. Uh, do not uh, transfer any money upfront without having um, to view the places or to uh, verify. Um, you can try and make a video call. Uh, you can have someone um, verify the listing for you if you can uh, do that, and that'll be uh, that'll be very uh, advised advisable. And here are resources, the places for students. Uh, it's one thing. Uh, that is um, that we highly uh, encourage students to go and look for accommodation. Apart from that, we do have Kichiji Marketplace and Rent Seeker. And as I said, be mindful of the safety precautions because uh, there will be multiple um, people trying to list uh, places that is not uh, um, really a place and may try to uh, scam you. So be aware of uh, scamming uh, in, when it comes to off-campus housing. And special note for Paris Sound students: It is uh, the it, if you have not connected with uh, your um, with the staff and uh, resources at uh, West Paris Sound, I highly encourage you connect with them and to find accommodation. One thing to keep in mind is that you, if it is an in person or a hybrid session, you are you must make sure that like you do um, uh, secure uh, housing and you do attend the classes in person as required or like it could uh, affect your academic progression. Amel, my apologies. Can I interrupt you for a quick moment? Sure. 
Thank you so much. Thanks, Amel, for all of the great information. I just wanted to flag for our student learners that there are special uh, sessions already posted to our orientation website relative to certain key themes. So, for example, housing is a thematic uh, area and a session in particular that has been recorded and more recently and posted online. So in addition to the information that is being shared with you today in this pre-departure orientation session, there are lots of uh, more details and nuances is, for example, connected to housing in those online sessions posted on the Canada Orientation webpage. So thanks. I uh, just wanted to flag that for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. Yeah, that's very valuable. Like, yeah, make sure that you uh, look into that information as well. And a place of worship, uh, I am, we do uh, acknowledge and like understand like, you know, people from uh, diverse backgrounds and diverse uh, faiths and beliefs, uh, or we do have students from diverse beliefs uh, and faith on campus. Toronto is the place that by far has that most exhaustive place of worship, uh, be it any faith or religion uh, that you want to follow or choose to follow, Toronto has the place for it. And for North Bay, we do have... Uh, the link here and uh, for Paris Sound, we do have um, do have diverse a range of faiths and like place of worship that you can uh, make use of and uh, not as much as of Toronto, of course, but uh, again, Toronto is like a three hour drive from North Bay. Yeah, what the next important thing that you may be uh, wanting when you come when you land in Canada is to have a SIM card and a phone like uh, you can you can choose to bring your own phone or you can get a phone when you come here. Uh, we will not be able to advise which exact uh, plan or uh, provider to go with. We do have a lot of uh, providers providing student centric plans and uh, student uh, centric um, options uh, which is uh and student deals uh, that comes along with so uh make uh you do need a, a copy of your uh a proof of identity document uh, they do accept passport so make sure you take a, a copy of your passport uh when you uh approach uh the providers it's not changing yeah, next thing is a like bank account as uh, similar as the phone providers bank accounts do provide uh, student centric plans and uh, student friendly options for um, to bank with. Uh, one thing you will uh, need to uh, do it yourself is browse around and shop around and see which plan is uh, ideal for you depending on the needs and depending on how you'll be using banking um, depending on uh, where uh, which country of origin you are and depending on who provides the best exchange rates that is something to consider while choosing a bank account Emil yes I'm just going to jump in quickly on the banking because we had some challenges last term that I forgot to mention and that is that you need to make an appointment with the bank in order to open a bank account and if there are a lot of students all at once making um, appointments, it can back it up. So it can take a week to two weeks to get an appointment. So you need to make sure that you have access to um, some form of um, uh, financing to bridge that first two weeks while you're getting a bank account open. So your bet normally debit cards work well, um, if they have the right uh, Interact um, logo on it, but that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, you should, uh, you should, um, you should do get a appointment that is very advisable as well. Thank you, Chris. Okay, uh, cooking in Canada, and especially cooking in North Bay, and uh, North Bay has come a long way in terms of having uh, international foods. Uh, so we do have uh, new uh, businesses open up that do provide a variety of international um, uh, food uh, in terms of grocery and ingredients. As uh, Sonia mentioned, uh, the, we do get a lot of uh, Indian or uh, international uh, food stuff here. And uh, which I'm, I'm, I cook, I cook every day and I do love cooking. And that's one thing that I'm not uh, uh, worried about is I, I do get a lot of uh, stuff here in North Bay. And one of the recent openings that we had is the Spices Village, uh, who, do prof uh, who do provide like all kinds of spices in terms of uh, international cuisine. 
And also uh, one thing to note here is that uh, they do provide uh, student discounts uh, at a certain uh, businesses uh, to so make sure that you take your uh, student ID card when you go in there. And like uh, just by showing your student ID card, you can avail, uh, avail those discounts. Okay, uh, next thing is driving. Uh, many of you would uh, have the um, would have been driving wherever you are and would be wanting to uh, drive here in Canada as well. Driving in Canada is uh, really a, a different experience for sure because of the four seasons and uh, the snow and the ice and uh, the the erratic uh, nature of weather, uh, which changes uh, every every day sometimes. So uh, it is very uh, it is very rec very much recommended that you go through a graduate licensing system to get your uh, license here. But if you do have your uh, license in India or any other country that uh, you are from, uh, make sure that you get your uh, driving extract, uh, um, that uh, driving extract out outlining um, your experience and it should not be uh, more than six months. Uh, that will help you uh, to expedite your process of driving here. So uh, usually uh, our general practice of uh, the license, um, licensing getting licensed in Ontario is that you write a, a road test uh, that is a written exam uh, that gets your G1 license and after you get your G1 license you go for your road test which gives you your G2 license and with G2 license you maybe you can drive uh, around uh, uh, Canada with a little restrictions and after uh, that you would give your uh, road test for the full G license. One thing to note here is that from your G1 written exam, it takes one year to get your uh, G2, uh, G2, um, uh, G2 uh, license. Uh, if you do bring in the extract, you will be exempted and you can directly uh, take your uh, G2 license. So uh, if you are interested in driving, that is something to look at and bring in your uh, driving extract. In transportation, transport, North Bay, uh, uh, we do have a, a beautiful uh, North Bay city transit system. Uh, we do have uh, buses running during uh, school hours um, and uh, with, uh, show up with some restrictions on weekends and late evenings where you can, book, where you can uh, book buses using the North Bay Transit uh, app. And apart from the North Bay Transit, we do have uh, taxi services. And uh, there is U Ride, which is the uh, Uber equivalent in North Bay, and um, I'm gonna... yeah, and also uh, most of the uh, businesses uh, here are within uh, walking distances, and you can also like if you choose to um, bike, uh, summer is a very good time to uh, bike around in the bike trails, and there's also like um, during the snow, uh, you can also try mountain biking if you like. So uh, getting around North Bay is uh, pretty. Uh, um, is pretty short, I would say, uh, compared to uh, other big cities because uh, this is very much uh, connected in terms of uh, short distances. Okay. Yeah, as I said, this is the uh, this is how you book a bus uh, during uh, evenings and on weekends. Uh, the North Bay Transit System has um, has implemented dynamic dispatching. Depending on where you are in and which part of the city, you can um, book the bus uh, from your phone, and the bus will come to you, and you can uh, track the buses lifetime, just like a Uber taxi. In uh, for Paris Sound, uh, for students joining from Paris Sound, uh, Paris Sound does not offer city bus or subway transportation, but they do have. Uh, but again, uh, it's uh, much more uh, connected in terms of uh, walking distance and uh, biking. And for taxis, most of them provide a flat rate within the town. Um, and if you also like interested in driving, that is something to look at. And uh, that's it. And I will hand it over to Sonia. Thank you, Amal. Um, wonderful and very important information shared with the students. Um, I think we come to the last part, which is uh, uh, related to registration related matters. Um, I think if even if you have received study visa, registration is very important. Otherwise, you won't be able to attend classes at Canada. And hence, it is very 
important for us to kind of inform you about how it goes and what all you have to do. Um, so for students who have received study visa um, and for those students who have applied directly to Canada, you go to something called as the OCAS portal, which is Ontario College Application Service. You must have applied your application also through OCAS. So you have to go to your application details and you have to upload uh, the copy of PPR or study visa, whatever you have received. Only when you upload the study visa that your status on OCAS changes to a pre-registered state. What it means for the college is that we have an idea that you are coming to Canada for the winter 2024 intake for your seat to be reserved. So this is only the first step, which is pre-registration on OCAS. However, the actual registration opens three weeks before the class start date. So we are expecting the registrations to open uh, starting December. So you have to keep looking at your inbox. And if you feel that you're not receiving email, emails, please check your spam or junk box because sometimes the emails go to there. So keep a track of your uh, inbox for direct communication from the college about the exact date when registration will start. I can see a lot of students have asked this question in the Q&A section. So I'm just letting you know that no final date has been announced by the college yet. Uh, and it will be communicated to all the students on the email ID that we have in your application details. For students who are using services of an agency, uh, please uh, note that it's the responsibility of your counselor or the agent to upload the PPR or the visa copy on OCAS. So you must be active enough to get in touch with them and you must know that it has been done or not. Uh, we often receive uh, questions from students. When are we going to receive the uh, timetable or the schedule of classes? Please note, once you are registered at Canada, you receive access to your uh, account, student service account, and only then you get the access to your schedule on timetable. And students who send emails to us, can you please change my schedule or timetable? It's not possible. We are not customizing uh, timetables and schedule. What is being given, you have to follow that. Um, in case of a study permit refusal, while we all the best wishes to everyone that they receive their study visa, but in case you receive study permit refusal, um, you must know that you do have an option to defer if you can kind of are very confident that you must have received a study visa we can give you an option to defer to the next intake and it is also uh, quite important to note that canada only allows one deferral we often call it as one free deferral if you're applying deferral for the second time or the third time the process is that the student or the agency must email us for closing the existing application and you must reapply. We do not give second and third deferrals on the same application. It's allowed only once. Now, what is the deferral deadline for any student to defer from Jan 2024 to any future intake, which can be spring 2024 or fall 2024? I just received an information 10 minutes ago. The date is 22nd December. So all the students must note the deadline to defer from Jan 2024 to a future intake is 22nd of December. If you are confused that whether you might receive a study visa, please do not defer and register both. If you do that, it creates issues in our system. And you might even have some penalty in terms of tuition fee because once you have withdrawn or you have applied for refund and then on the other hand, you have registered also, it creates a lot of confusion in the system. The deadline to notice 22nd December. Um, we have also included this section for you to know the refund policy. 
though it is clearly mentioned on the third page of your LOA, which is letter of acceptance, there is a link. Uh, there is a link in FAQ section also, which every international student should look at. However, we also wanted to highlight in the pre-departure session the withdrawals and refunds. If you receive a study permit refusal, um, you and you apply for a refund, which happens through OCAS, again, on the system where your application exists. Only 300 Canadian dollars of admin fee is deducted in case of a visa refusal. There can be some exchange-related um, um, you know, cost as well. So 300 is the amount which college deducts. If it's a withdrawal, and if it's a withdrawal, whether you don't want to study at Canada or it's a withdrawal because you have changed your mind, you must note that 2,400 Canadian dollars will be deducted from your tuition and the rest will be refunded. The another thing to note in withdrawal is if you withdraw after the 10 days class start, for example, we are starting for winter 2024 on 8th of January, the 10 day count will be up to 18th of January. So if you are going to withdraw after that, you will lose the entire semester tuition. So please to all the students, your family has invested a lot of money. So please make sure that you make wise decisions in terms of the deadlines and the process outlined by the college and all this information is available on the website. Coming to um, what you should bring um, is we have a policy of bring your own device. That means laptop is very essential because you will be doing your assignments um, and your projects and you need a system with you. If you don't have a laptop in your home country and you plan to buy it in Canada, then you must bring the money or you must have the resources to buy it. It's not the responsibility of the college. If you have already have a laptop and it needs repairs or it needs any software updates, it is completely your responsibility. Um, that's not uh, with the college. So please remember this. You must have a, a laptop with you to do your work because uh, everything is you're going to search online. Everything is not possible through a mobile phone. Um, this comes the most important point for students because I know many of you are looking for opportunities, whether with respect to scholarship or bursaries. Uh, if you look at the slide, though it, this is also available on the website if you go through, but if you want to click a picture, you can. Scholarships um, are something that is given for the academic excellence, your contribution to the classroom or your attendance. It's a mix of various factors and both domestic and international students compete to get scholarships. You must be eligible uh, to get a scholarship and they open on 1st November till 15th December. You must keep a note of these um, uh, dates and you must apply online. That is a form. The same goes with bursaries as well, just in case a student um, has financial issues or student is uh, needy or they have shown academic excellence, you get bursaries as well. And the dates are clearly mentioned on the slides and they open between October 1 uh, to October uh, 31st. So for all the students, this is an excellent opportunity in which Canada students actually supports uh, um, their students. And um, just a quick uh, note that about 144 students got the scholarships last year. So this is a good opportunity. Um, coming to the social insurance number, uh, while um, it's the most important part of your identity and it must be kept private, you should not share your SIN number with anyone. There are students who write their SIN numbers in email and send it to international department, send it to some of my colleagues, send it to finance, it's not needed. Uh, please make sure that you keep your social insurance number private and you get it when you are in Canada. Um, you get go to Service Canada and they issue the SIN number to you. Um, always remember that you have to kind of protect your SIN number. Um, it is basically an account um, of what you earn and um, must be private. 
what do you expect in first week of classes all as my colleagues have already uh, kind of um, mentioned about uh, the in person orientation uh, which is going to happen uh, apart from that when you join the classes starting 8th of uh, january uh, you are actually made to go through the program outlines and you must also take opportunity uh, to explore the library, gymnasium, student lounge, cafeteria. We have so many facilities, such a beautiful campus. You must explore all of that. Make friends. Uh, that is your opportunity, which you actually start from the orientation day itself. Uh, we have an interesting activity now. Uh, we have come to uh, the end part of our presentation. Uh, let's see um, if it works. I'm hoping for the best. Yeah, me too, Sonia. Okay. Ahmed, uh, do you want to mention anything? Yes, I wouldn't mind. Uh, thank you very much uh, to our colleagues. And this is just to concretize something that has already been mentioned. Um, but but just just to just to uh, mention it, maybe one more time, it's probably worth it. Late arrivals, <clears throat> it can be very problematic. Please do take good care to arrive on time for your studies. Um, every year there are significant issues with students who assume they can arrive late and um, do so and have significant trouble because the academic leads, deans or department leads concerned will um, have the ultimate say on whether you can progress if you've missed some of your classes. The longer you the longer you're delayed, the harder it becomes a day or two might be understandable. But believe me that there have been issues with students arriving one or two weeks late, three weeks late, four weeks late, who have been told that uh, not only are they late, but that they've lost their entire tuition fees because they didn't withdraw appropriately. That also connects to another point, which is that the 10 day count is quite important. It is, uh, of course, you're joining a public college and and there are regulations and rules, and uh, we, of course, adhere to government standards, which of which one I would say is uh, the 10 day approach, which is that within the first 10 days, you have the right to make decisions that are best in your best interest. If you choose to withdraw, if you choose to leave, there are uh, there is that period of time. So do pay good attention to that 10 day period. After that, if I could put it this way, bad things happen. You're kind of locked in after the 10 day count. But prior to the 10 day count, lots of things can happen and lots of things, movements can happen. So do be, please be mindful that if you have to change or do anything, uh, do so within that 10 day period, which is there to protect you. That's all I really wanted to concretize. Thank you again, everybody.